Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Pigments 5 and we're making a pad called Haunted House, which I like making creepy things. And this is more so a texture rather than a pad because pad's a little bit more musical, but you know what I'm saying? It's more of a an ambient kind of texture setting the vibe type of thing for a creepy house or something haunted. So anyway, this is what we have. Okay, so like I said, it's more of a texture and let's have some fun with this. So <laughs> this one, there's quite a lot going on here. As you can see, I didn't even label my fourth macro, so shame on me. Anyway, let's get into creating this patch. Let's open up our fresh copy of pigments here. File new preset just in case. And basically, if we, you know what? If we target this guy real quick, what we can do is let's turn off the effects for now. And then uh, let's kind of turn off these stuff. So we have the utility engine. We have the sample engine, and then we have the wavetable. So this one is kind of weird because this sound is really, it's almost like some kind of growl of a weird animal. Right when the effects are kind of going, it sounds like a hellhound or something. I don't even know. Especially there in the lower register. Okay, so anyway, this one is going to be called a bit and this found in Pigments 5. So let's go ahead and load that up here. So let's close that. Open this guy, target this one, and then in the wavetable, let's click this here and pigments five, we're gonna be going to bit and double click this here. So that's what we get initially. So our position is gonna be 0.524, so we can move that here, 0.524, something like that. And our output's quite low, so negative 15.9. So let's go ahead and do that now. Negative 15.9, are we getting, there we go. So that's what we have here. And then our tuning is gonna be down two octaves. So negative 24 semitones right here. So yeah, we have this weird sound here. So next up, this is kind of moving on a random, right? So random one at 0 0.41. So we can make that drag and drop real quick. Random one and then 0 0.41. And let's go see exactly how this random is working. So it's basically moving this position knob, right? It's gonna be on touring, so we really don't have to change the default. And if we click here, <clears throat> it's pretty much doing exactly what this one is here. So we just have to drag and drop and then add a little, little bit more of that depth. That's kind of doing that same thing. So we're doing some voices here at two, something like that here. The detune is gonna be default, stereo default. No, don't have to worry about anything else. We're not gonna be messing with any of these knobs here, but what we are doing is doing a little bit of fine tuning on this modulation here, and this is gonna be on random two. So we can grab random two and drag and drop to this guy, and our depth is going to be, what do we have here? 0.14, so a very small amount, right? We don't want it too much there. Okay, <clears throat> so this one, we take a look at this guy, this is gonna be on sample and hold. So let's go to random two, sample and hold, which is gonna be fine. However, this one's gonna be re-triggered by the clock. So let's go here to the clock. And this, this is gonna be actually Hertz mode. So change this from the rate to Hertz and <laughs> Hertz tone in, right? 85 point something should be in that zone there. 85 is kind of cool there. And we're doing a little bit of the rise and fall because here it's a little too jagged. So we can bring this up to about 154 milliseconds. Something right about there. It makes it a little bit more smooth, right? Always nice to have smooth things, right? As long as you lotion up, you know what I'm saying? Okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why do you guys still watch this? Okay, so we have this uh, We have this wavetable down. We're pretty much cool here. That's all we really have to do for this guy. So let's go ahead and mute this for now. And let's take a look at the sample and see what's going on under this hood. So this one's gonna be male, A-E-I-O-U. I almost said like A-U, which is, I don't know, maybe it's a French word, who knows? Okay, it's, it's the vowels I know, not that dumb. Okay, so let's turn this on. And uh, so we go to the male. So this is gonna be in pigments five, right? There's a lot of cool samples in here. Highly recommend to go through some of those, as well as the wavetables. So male, <laughs> A-E-I-O-U, C2. So it's gonna be this guy. It's already kind of creepy anyway. 
Okay, so the cool part or kind of interesting thing about this guy, this is going to be slowly moving right this start here and it's going to be on an LFO. But first we need to do at 0.5 because we're kind of going halfway here. So 0.50, something like that. Cool. And now we need to modulate this with an LFO at 0.25 and this is going to be LFO 1. So we can really just drag and drop and it's already 0.25. So we're kind of good. Now we just have to edit this LFO. So with this guy, we're going very, very slow on a sine wave, free running, so we can change that. So LFO1 is going very slow, we're doing free running. The rate's actually 0 0.022, so bring that down to 0 0.022 is moving a little bit too fast. All right, kind of a cool sound there. We also are using granular. And some of these values, I do believe I changed, like the pitch is 0.2 instead of 0.1 here. So it gives a little bit more of a dissonant kind of feeling. The start is 1, 2, 0, just a little bit like that, barely changing that guy. And then the direction is going to be forwards and backwards, right? Front to back and back, back again. <laughs> okay. And then uh, that should be it, I believe, for that. Yeah. A little bit of unison here. Like that. Yeah, it already sounds actually pretty cool. Okay, so that is this guy here. Now, before we get to the utility engine, we should set up our amp envelopes because that is kind of important for this song. Sa so song, sound, good God. Okay, attack 750 milliseconds. There we go, 750. And then a little uh, curve here, right? Little curves are nice. There we go. And then the release is gonna be 1.84 seconds. So we can bring that 1.84. And that's... Kind of what we have already. Kind of cool. Okay, so I believe that is good for now. So now we can hop into the utility engine and see what's happening here. So we're using every single one. I'm so sorry. Okay, so the first one is going to be bubble wrap. Now, this one's kind of cool because this is giving that weird textureness. So if we kind of target this guy again, and let's turn on our effects again. Like you hear those weird noises and textures, which is gonna be on this macro that we're gonna see in a second. So if we turn this one off here, we're kind of getting that. It almost sounds like rainy and just weird, right? But mixed with the engine two and the engine one, it kind of makes a whole picture of the whole thing. Okay, so with that being said, Let's go ahead and start adding this. So this bubble wrap is going to be a texture bubble wrap, right? <laughs> Who would have thought that we're making a haunted house out of bubble wrap? You'd think that's kind of counterintuitive. So texture, and then we are in bubble wrap. So with a B at the very top. <laughs> okay, so for this guy, we're doing a little bit of filtering, 16% er, low pass here. So we could bring this a little bit to the left at 16. Kind of cool. And this is going to filter number one. And we're going to be putting these on a macro, so I guess we can probably do that now. That's macro two, which is going to be textures. Might as well drag and drop this here. So you can bring this volume all the way down, and we're actually modulating this by an amount of 0.39. So 0.39. And when I was adding this, it's kind of like you have to put the macro up to max and then kind of slowly increase this value until you feel like that's right. Bring this up here, and then relabel this. Uh, what do we call it? Textures. There we go. Textures. Cool. So next up, we have the grains of 1899, so a long time ago. Anyway, let's bring this up here, and we can click this. I believe that should be in textures, right? Textures of, did I see that? What was it? There it is. Okay, grains of 1899, and no filter here. We're going to be putting this on the first filter, and same modulation macro is going to be 2, but 0.36 for the value. So drag and drop here, bring this down, 0.3... Six, there we go. Something kind of like that, pretty cool. Okay, now this is kind of typical what I do here, which is gonna be a sub, as you can see down here, it's gonna be sub. So we can uh, turn this guy on, and remember not the filter, but go direct out, bring this all the way down. And then for this guy, we're modulating that at 0.64. So macro three, drag and drop. Then we have 0.6. Four, there we go. And macro three, we label this to sub. So if you ever want to use it, it is there, which you might not really have to, but you know, if you want to, it's there. 
Okay, so that's basically all three engines right here. So let's just double check our volume for the sample engine. This is gonna be at 135, which I believe we need to change that. 135, there we go, something like that. Okay, perfect. Okay. So now our filters, let's go ahead and talk about these guys. So the first filter is gonna be the multi the multi-mode high pass 12. So let's change this to high pass 12. And then our cutoff is gonna be 204, something like that. And what we're kind of really doing is cutting off the low end from the sample, any, any of the stuff from the utility with exception to the sub, and then also the wavetable, and kind of using that sub as a filler for that, I suppose. Okay. Next up, this first filter goes into the second filter, and this is going on the SEM, or S-E-M, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And this guy is going to be a resonance of 0 0.220, 0 0.220. There we go. Kaboom. And if you notice here on this guy, I didn't put a resonance macro on here because I didn't really feel like it was necessary. Because it's kind of this kind of set here. It's kind of it is what it is for this patch specifically. But this cutoff is 188. So let's bring that guy down, 188. And then we have the macro, which is going to be macro one on this guy. So 0 0.65. So we can put cut off. Yes, I spelled that right. Okay. 0.65, I think we did 0.65 or 66. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. All right. So that is this guy here. And if we look, this macro is pretty much all the way up for the cutoff. So we're going to bring that up for now. And that's the kind of cool part because with those noises, these utility engine noises, they're going to filter one, right? It goes through here, then it goes through here. So we can kind of remove these. We still get that low end kind of grumble. And that's where we get all the high frequency content, that nasty stuff. Okay, so we should be pretty good at this point. We can go over here to the effects tab. Now, let's see what we're doing here. So quite, quite a lot. So the problem with this patch here in the beginning was this huge EQ dip that you're going to see here. And let's go to our EQ because that guy has a lot of low end and we had to really uh, hack the crap out of this thing. So basically we are 128, so we can bring this first guy to 128 or 27, that's fine. And then we're actually bringing this down by 14.2, so a huge cut, something like that. And the rest we can leave alone. And the next up is gonna be the multiband, which for here, I really don't believe we did too much. Maybe bring this up a tad bit like that or something, I don't know. Maybe actually the low end up a little bit too. And the next we have, you guess it, a pitch shifting delay. Now this one's fun for a lot of dissonant kind of stuff. So if you look at these settings, we have our time is actually 91 milliseconds. We're not actually using this as a uh, tempo mapped kind of time delay. It's more of a extension of the sound, I suppose. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. So we change this to the time. And this is going to be so quick, right? So we are at 91.7. Because once delays are so close, it almost has a whole different effect to it. It feels a little more extended, I suppose. So don't be afraid to use uh, actual time values as opposed to always having things on the grid. Okay, so the spray is fine. The pitch shifting is going to be negative one semitone, which is kind of nice. It gets the harmonic stuff. Harmonic minor. And then our feedback is going to be 0 0.150. So bring that down just a little bit like that. And then we're doing some low cutting and then some high cutting, something like that. Okay. Next up, we have another EQ dip for this next guy because this one is kind of hard to tame, right? I guess it's, it kind of goes with that sound. It's all creepy, so it is. It should be kind of crazy to tame. So this is on two, and we're targeting about one. No, wait, no, we're on this guy. We are at 296, so we can use this band, 296. Where are you there? You're, oh, my goodness. 298, that's fine. And then we're dropping this down by 15, so pretty much all the way. And then we're tightening up the Q a little bit. So what are we at? 2.2, 2.2. Two. Okay, and then the next one's gonna be another delay, but this one's gonna be regular delay, so just the basic one at one over four. You can kind of leave that there. And a lot of the stuff is gonna be, for the most part, kind of default, increase a little bit of the high pass and maybe a little low pass. Ping pong, because I love ping pong. And then our dry what's gonna be 43%, so we can bring that up to 43. 
And then we have a course coming up next and let's click this guy. So this one, the dry wet's gonna be 21. So we can bring that down to 21, something right there. And then for the most part, we're increasing this depth here. So this is at 6.76 or something like that. There we go. And then last but not least, we're gonna be using an aux here. So this guy, we're gonna be using post effects, right? Because we want this, what's going to be a shimmer to receive the signal of the process stuff from these stacks, FXA and FXB. So in that case, we're gonna be doing 8.54 about, right? Something like this here, but we're gonna be switching this reverb out for a shimmer. And what I kind of like to more so is instead of making them nice and beautiful, we can bring this down to negative one, which is kind of playing off that delay, right? The pitch shifting delay that is. So negative one, I'm right about there. And then the high, high pass, uh, low pass are pretty much about fine. No ducking for this guy. And for the most part, that's just about what we have to do. You see, do you, you kind of almost hear those like, there's like hellhound kind of like grunts or whatever, whatever the snouting, what are, I don't know if they do growling, is that, is that it? But yeah, whatever that sound is, you kind of almost sounds like a dog in the background. Almost like, yeah, like some kind of weird animal, I don't know. Like on the Resident Evil movies, those weird, I don't even know what kind of dogs they are. <laughs> so bad with that. But yeah, just those like creepy dogs with like meat on them and they're just nasty. And they're just waiting for you to make a move. So yeah, this is pretty much the done patch. We do have to do the macro because I didn't do it here. And that is uh, that is very bad. So basically uh, the EQ, we don't have to do anything. The multi-man, we can leave that alone. We could do the amount, but I don't generally do that. And then macro four, we can drag and drop this to the pitch shift delay. It's 20, so bring down to 0 0.20. EQ, again, that's fine. This delay, we need to touch and the chorus. So this delay is 44. So bring this up to 0 0.44. Oh my goodness. Why is it so sensitive there? Okay. And then this one is 21. So bring that down to 0 0.21. And then the last one is the shimmer. And we could do it the dry wet here, or we could do it on the send. I kind of just do it on the send. So we can bring that down and then drag and drop, and then increase this to about here, wherever we really like it. Double click and label this as effects. And there you have it. I believe we have covered everything this patch has to offer. We're using quite a lot here, but it is a lot of fun to play around with, especially for creeping people out very late at night. We do want to bump up the master a little bit as well. Yeah, you could really hold a couple notes down and kind of move these macros a little bit, and it's going to be interesting for a, quite a long time. So, yeah, that was uh, the haunted house. So come on by; it's going to be a it's going to be a great time. So, yeah, if you want to get this patch for free, there's a link in the video description below, and it can be yours. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully, you learned something. Update to Pigments Five because you kind of need it for this patch. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.